So welcome to our presentation on mechanical seals for agitators uh, running in hygienic conditions suitable for pharmaceutical fine chemical market. Some of the things I'm just going to cover in this session um, are the basics of what a mechanical seal is and how it operates. Our range of mechanical seals for in particular top and bottom entry agitators. Uh, a comparison of what a dry running versus wet running versus Gauss lubricating seal is and how that what the benefits are of that. Um, I'm going to cover why our designs are hygienic designs. We'll have a little summary at the end and then we'll have time for question and answers after uh, the, the initial presentation. So, OK, so what is a mechanical seal and what is it in relation to a, a vessel or an agitator? So essentially a mechanical seal is what we call a controlled leakage device. If we look at our tank here, we can see the shaft moving through the tank and we can see here without that this would give rise to a leakage point. Now the mechanical seal comes in in essence in a relatively simple format. There are two faces. One is stationary, one rotates. And the mechanical seal allows a small amount of leakage across the seal face to lubricate the seal face, remove heat and remove any debris. Within supporting this seal face is an elastomer or an O-ring of some description and a, and a force, pushing force, which keeps the seal face closed and in contact. Typically our closing force is, is created by something like a spring. Um, and we can see here a very simple design which would normally fit in a pump of a stationary seal face, rotating seal face, a spring and a retaining unit. And this is the basic design for every mechanical seal and how it functions. So aside from single seal options, we also have multiple seal options and arrangements. So these are used when we can't have any allowable admissions either into or out of the vehicle uh, vessel. Where a backup is required in case of a seal failure and where the process is either dangerous to the environment or the environment is dangerous to the process. Or where, for instance, a process fluid or lubricant is, is a bad lubricant or it's not in contact with the with the seal face. So a typical, a typical example of this is an agitator type action. So our, multi, our dual seal arrangements or our multiple seal arrangements come in the format of what we call a tandem seal or dual pressurized or a dual pressurized back to back seal. And if we just had take a, a quick look here, we can see what we call a dual non pressure This is a typical not dual non pressurized. The liquid from the product is sealed by an inboard face, and then we've got an outboard face for, for secondary containment. So if this fails, the outboard face contains the product. Typically, then the product would run on what we call a barrier fluid. So moving on then to what we call our John Crown vessel technology. I'd just like to show that typically we work with a number of key customers in a number of key industries. So our vessel seals fit to, um, we supply to what we call original equipment manufacturers shown here, such as Fowler, De Dietrich, um, Lightning XBX, Kemenia, NOV, amongst others. We also work with a number of key um, end users across the markets, people like Bayer, BSF, Lanxis, Pfizer, um, Bristol Myers Squibb, Dow. These are all customers we work with and we have a full range of seals to cover all their requirements. So what is it now or where is it we fit our mechanical seals in relation to a, uh, an agitator? So if we look at the 
we look here, we've got we have three positions. So the first one we're going to look at here is what we call bottom entry. So the drive system is fitted at the bottom of a vessel, which means that the mechanical seal is typically wetted by the product. So we would install our seal just above the drive system and, and protruding into the vessel to be able to show full containment within the vessel. And typically we would use what we call a dual seal and I'll explain those designs a little later on. And next is what we call a top entry seal or a vessel. So as we can see here, our drive arrangement is on the opposite end of the vessel this time. This is uh, the, the drive mechanism and pedestal at the top here, and our mechanical seal would be installed around the top of between the around the top of the vessel and underneath the drive system. Typically, though, with these kind of applications, the fluid in the vessel never actually touches the seal and the seal would have to be purposely designed to ensure that we don't uh, that we can withstand any dry running conditions and finally our third type of uh, seal that we supply on agitator type uh, solutions is what we call our side entry seal as we can see here we have a drive system that's supported on a pedestal um, and we fit our seal in a housing which then protrudes into the vessel. Typically John Crane supplies um, them vessel seals uh, to materials suitable for the application. So in the case of where the vessel is, is made in a steel, whether that be stainless steel, hastel oil or titanium, we will supply a, a mechanical seal that's compatible with that material. A lot of vessels are also supplied in a glass line configuration uh, for purity and hygienic reasons or chemical compatibility regions. So John Crane also have then engineers its seals, its mechanical seals to be suitable to work with a glass lined uh, agitator. Um, we have our own specific range of seals to do that and we have worked with a number of key OEMs to ensure that the design fits their unit without causing any damage. And these are just some typical examples of our top entry uh, mechanical seals in the steel configuration and glass line configuration. So we're looking now at the moment at qualified hygienic designs and those kind of needs that the market has. So when we think of that, we, for us, that what we're looking at is some kind of pharmaceutical, biotechnology, or anything kind of physical, chemical, or ballot where contamination is is a key issue um, because of the onward supply chain involved in the product. Our equipment must be designed to be suitable for that environment. So therefore, when we look at designing our equipment, we look at cleaning place unsterilize in place and we'd look for the materials to be of a not of a non-toxic and contamination free uh, design so typically then we we worked with the international standards um, to create what we call our qualified hygienic designs some of those kind of standards are fda cgmp ehedge and World Health Organization, and we've understood the requirements that they specify to be ensure that the product is suitable within that supply chain. Now, going back to the type of seals earlier, I mentioned we got single and dual seals. Those can be used in these environments, and our, both our single and dual seals have been designed with FDA compliant materials, the USP Class 5. Uh, and quite often we all supply it everywhere with these products to ensure that we don't see any contamination in the product. Where the, the application really demands the highest level of purity, um, we increase that. We, we look at the dual pressurized seal arrangements, we call our back-to-back -back arrangement. 
which prevents the transfer of any microorganisms uh, to the atmosphere or anything from the atmosphere back into the product. We can also minimize any face wear that enters the from and stop particles entering the product. Um, we can supply seals with uh, from a wet run invasion where we use a liquid barrier. We can use um, a wet running seal with a steam barrier, or we can use a top entry dry running seal, um, or and a dry running seal with a gas, what we call a gas lubricated barrier as well. What we also understand is how significant the finish to the mechanical seal actually is. So in order to, in, to ensure that we reach the surface finish required by the industry, we do look at electropology. Um, we do understand how that reduces turbulence and reduces the opportunity for any organisms to build on the surface of the metal. As I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, we do look at what we call cleanability and sterilization. Um, so we look at cleaning place and we, when we look at that, we understand that the, the material or the parts of the mechanical seal that are in um, contact with the vessel or with the product need to be suitable for cleaning. So they've got to be suitable for for instance, a caustic or a phosphoric or nitric acid. Um, but we've also got to be able to ensure that the, the materials are, su are suitable for those environments and that we can reach all parts of the mecha seal, mechanical seal that touch the product. We also need to consider this SIP or sterilization or steam in place. And we also understand, we understand the need for using that, that it uses a hot steam or a purified air. We understand that there's a significant temperature to that of up somewhere can be up to, tipping up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and that can last for up to 20 minutes. So we, we, we will design our seals to accommodate that operating, uh, that operational envelope. And as I mentioned, one of the things we've really got to look at is is the purity to the application. So we we want to really consider the seal face technology with that. Now, each of these three technologies of liquid lubricated, contacting dry running, and non-contacting gas seal has a benefit, um, and also has an application depending on the product, the process, the condition. What we're going to do is just summarize some of the key points shown here. Um, so a liquid lubricated seal is the one, the kind of seal that we showed in the initial first slide. There is a liquid film there that will lubricate the seal faces. And typically we're still going to use this on a something like a bottom entry or a side entry application where the seal is in touch with the product. You're going to need a barrier fluid with this, and that's typically something process compatible. You know, oil, water, solvents are some examples of what we can use. And this is a kind of technology that's been around for a long time. And it, the advantages are, you know, where the process has slightly higher pre higher pressure, a higher speed. This would be really the 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 seal face technology that would give the maximum reliability. We're on also the maximum safety and it will it will be an extre extremely hard wearing heavy duty seal. But if liquid isn't, we can't put liquid back into the process and we need to keep that process as dry as possible. Then we can start. We have two other options we can look at. We have what we call our contact in dry running seal. So this is where if I just take you to, to the seal face down here on the right, this is where the seal face here is made of a certain of a special grade of carbon that essentially then runs against this typically a silicon carbide face. Now, because of the material construction and um, because of the lower, slightly lower operating speed, we can we can 
essentially run these without any kind of liquid contamination going back into the process. You would normally need a gas barrier, but this gas barrier, gas barrier is normally just to is normally to ensure the closing force on the seal faces. There will be a small amount of gas, nitrogen gas travels across the seal face and will either go out to atmosphere on the atmospheric side or go into the vessel um, on the inboard side. Now this does give a contamination free barrier fluid. Like I say, it is, but it is restricted on the speed and the pressure applied. Um, and you will, there will be some slight contamination um, and there will be some sort of wear in where the carbon may enter the product. This is a wide ranging seal technology that's used in everything from chemical top entry reactors to well, agitators and reactors to um, things like filter, you know, quite like filter dryer systems where taking moisture out is key and not putting more moisture in um, into the process. But what if we need to take that that one step further what if what if we can't tolerate any liquid into the process we can't tolerate any carbon and we need to ensure that there's no there's no contamination either coming out of the vessel or going into the vessel we then need to look at what we call our, our non-contacting gas seal or our gas lubricated so this runs on what we call a gas film and if we just look at this picture here on the top, we can see what we call grooves here in the seal face. As shown here, so the, the seal grooves from the outside to in go from deep to shallow. And essentially we we pressurize these with with standard nitrogen, probably around three bar above, or if we dry nitrogen, should I say, typically three bar above the process pressure. And that allows us to create a a gas lift off um, which opens the seal faces so you've got no product contamination no friction heat a relatively high speed and a simple barrier system and it it ensures absolute purity of the product so we talked a little bit i'm going to just sort of go through now show you the type of seals and what the advantages disadvantages and the suitable applications they, they run. So we need to bear in mind, obviously, we've talked about cleanability, sterilizability in place. We've talked about surface finish. Um, we've talked about seal face technology and where we're going to apply that. So if we look here, this is what we would call a single mechanical seal. So we, John Crane, developed a type, what we call our Type 32 seal many years ago, um, and it's been running successfully for for sort of 25 to 30 years, we've had this in the field running successfully. Um, this is made up of a few, of several key parts, uh, of a metal collar or retainer unit holding a primary face and a secondary face. As we can see here, there are O-rings that basically seal this to the gland and then another ring would seal it to the shaft. Now, what makes these suitable for hygienic designs? we can have what we call FDA, we have the FDA material options to ensure that the, the product uh, is safe. We can fit what we'll call a debris well, which essentially means that we put a barrier between the seal face and the product. So if we do get any carbon wear, it's deposited into the seal, into a, into a well here, which is then flushed. This is a simple, easy design um, accommodating a vast range of shaft designs and pressure uh, requirements. Now, with this being a single seal, it is essentially running dry and it is it is sealing the vapors from the process. You, as we said before, every mechanical seal is what we call a controlled leakage device. So there is a, a level of security with this but if your process can withstand this then it, it's a good suitable application however if the process needs further control or we're looking at what we call a bottom entry seal we can start looking at 
what we call our 586 family. So this is what we typically call a, a, a slurry seal. And this, this then moves us into the bottom entry market or where the, where the seal is, is product wetted. So what, what makes this good for the application? Typically, it's normally in a cartridge design. It can come either single or dual or a dual seal. So the single seal will only give you a certain level of containment and the dual seal then will give you a much greater level of containment. We can bring this in what we call a hygienic design, which means it's it's suitable for the cleaning place. Um, we we make it so that there's no opportunity for um, contamination to stay within any any areas or, or any dead spaces. Um, and we make this so if it's in a bottom entry where there's a there's a slurry type application, the seal faces are configured to be able to withdraw withstand um, any kind of solid particles. So then, as we sort of suggested earlier, you know the the dual seal. This is this is what a dual seal arrangement would look like in that kind of configuration. We have areas for the barrier. So with this being a bottom entry seal, it will protrude into the vessel, it will be liquid lubricated and you will need a barrier in and out. So you will need a barrier fluid. So this seal face here, this will go out into the vessel itself with this secondary seal here, providing the secondary containment, ensuring there's no leakage to atmosphere and there's no atmosphere, there's no potential for atmospheric contamination back into the vessel. So typically we would see pressure ratings of up to 60 of full vacuum to 16 bar or 232 PSI. Temperatures of up to 260 degrees and speeds if when lubric liquid lubricated up to 14 meters per second or 2700 feet per minute. So moving that on, we talked a little bit about before we talked earlier about the types of seal faces and where those applications would work. So if we if we then understand that the 586 was particularly well built for um, a liquid lubricated environment, something like a bottom entry seal, we then need to consider well, what would we do on a top entry seal? So if for the hygienic applications, we would look again go looking at what what we could do. The phase. So, in arrangement we've got here, we have what we call our 7800 seal. So, we have our 7848, which is a dry running seal with a nitrogen barrier. So, as you can see here, it has on the inboard what we call the inboard phase. So this would be the phase nearest to process. It has um, a self lubricating carbon face inboard. And then on the side nearest the atmosphere, self lubricating carbon on the uh, face on the outboard. So if with a nitrogen barrier here, we're containing the vessel, the products in the vessel from escaping, or we're containing any atmospheric leakage back into the product. As we can see here, we where the seal face touches, the tooth seal faces touch, we would have wear. But what we've actually installed here is called a debris well. So essentially any carbon deposits will will basically rest in this point here and, and we will be able to flush those out. However, what we can do is put in the gas lubricated seal face into this arrangement as well. So if the if the process changes or your requirements change as a result of environmental policies, um, you would then potentially swap that out for what we call a gas lubricated face. So you would have no process contamination at all. You would have a non-contacting seal and you would, you would see full purity of your product. So taking that one, one stage further, should your application really require the highest level of containment, we would look at having what we call a gas seal face outboard on the atmospheric side of the seal and a gas seal face on the inboard nearest nearest the product and nearest the vessel. Similarly though, we do know there's occasions when 
this the hygienic design calls for a higher speed, higher pressure, maybe a higher temperature rating where the gas lubricated and the dry running seals are not suitable. So we do provide some degree of flexibility with that and we would be able to put in what we call wet running seals and these do require these do have a place in the market and that's simply just changing the seal face to ensure that the seal face then contacts a then liquid lubricated by a barrier fluid on both the inboard and outboard so what we can do is we can put a debris well here to catch any any deposits but you will get a barrier you will get some of the liquid and the vapors from the liquid entering the vessel so just going over sort of the culmination of all that technology we also have what we call our high purity design seal where the application requires the the absolute highest level of containment and the highest level of clean clean in place and sterilize in place um, and we have three options for this but so this is called our 5280 seal so if if we look here we have um the seal here would sit on top of the gland and the seal face here would protrude into the vessel. Now, as we said before, for a cleaning place, the seal has got to be suitable for, um, has got to have the right surface finish. It's got to be able to withstand the cleaning process and it's got to provide no crevice or no area for any organisms to, or, organisms to cling to. Um, and with the seal face protruding in here, all the cleaning place fluid is able to hit the seal faces and is able to hit here, is, is able to clean this area here in contact with the product. We're also able to sterilize in place all the seal faces by inducing the steam clean at this area here to clean the whole seal barrier chamber. And there are different options with this kind of seal, as we can see here. We have typically something like a glass lined um, insert to be able to protect any kind of glass lined vessel. And then if the material or the, the process requires a material upgrade, you then have some kind of, we were to put in a titanium or a hastaloid um, insert to be able to be compatible with the vessel, but then the rest of the seal that's away from the that would not see the process is then made from a stainless steel. Typically, this kind of seal would come in something like a wet running configuration, a dry running configuration, and a gas and a gas dry configuration. Um, again, the same design standards apply, clean in place and sterilize in place. So just to sort of recap really on the material side, we do have a full range of products that, that we've we've engineered to suit the FDA and GRS compliant. Um, they do meet with all the standards, the latest standards. Um, if we do need to look at wet running seals, then we have configured the seals and worked extensively in the industry to run on purified water, steam and condensate, any kind of synthetic oil, nitrogen and sterile oil. Also for other material compliancy, we do look at the USP rating, we do look at ADI free certification and we will provide certificates of compliance to ensure that all those are met and you have full full traceability of those materials to go with your piece of equipment's passport within the plant. We will provide certified material test reports and we do do PMI inspections where requested. Electro polishing parts are supplied to the relative R value, but that needs to be stated up front and agreed and we will we'll ensure that that's 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 covered in a material code and all our grades of stainless steel are FDA compliant. So just to recap, when we look at our hygienic designs, we look to eliminate contamination, 
increase productivity and comply with reg regulations for the client. So that's the end of the number of slides and now we'll start to look to take our questions.